people, man. God gave you an eye, and 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 you have the Bible says the eye is a lamp of the body. Yes. So you have what we call the neurons and the brain, the way the brain functions. It is through what you hear and what you see that which you consume so much programs you into a being. And I want to give you men who tend to watch a lot of pornographic stuff what happened they become addicted and when they get married for those i've met with they realize the sister or daughter's god is not able to provide that which they were used to yes they end up many times struggling or they end up in divorce because yes. what the eye sees the eye programs some of the men you look at a woman lastfully the whole day then you go back home miserably in your bed then you end up falling into masturbation and tomorrow if it's a sister in church when you look at her because you've already impured her on your bed you will not quickly look at her face because already you're having those thoughts pearl radio the home of fresh and classic hits mr charles yeah how are you doing i'm i'm fantastic i'm doing well mm -hmm. yeah but praise god for this day yes yeah Karibu sana. Asante, asante. I hope no, you have not been uh, carried away by the the, the protest. <laughs> no, no, not really. Uh, yes. My work is to pray a lot much more. Yeah. Yeah, because at the end of it all, we have to surrender. We mm. do our part, the rest we surrender, we surrender to God. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing, and amazing. It's a blessing to be here. Yes. Thank you. So, so, so last week, we were doing an amazing, an amazing conversation yeah. on our relationship. Maybe you can just mention what you talked about, because tonight we're talking about something different. Yeah. yeah. Last week, we spoke about uh, part two of conflict resolution. Yes. And uh, quickly, we had to accept and acknowledge the fact that conflict are here to stay. Mm. And I think the most important important is what you do with the conflict that comes your way and how well are you equipped to deal with conflict i believe yes. that's on your youtube channel People yes can go over there yes and they get to listen to what you recorded yeah. yes yeah but tonight we want to talk about boundaries in relationships boundaries are very important and i hope that uh, the listeners today mm -hmm. will indeed learn yes and uh, create their own personal boundaries to protect their marriages protect their relationships protect their families yeah and protect their future amazing for the bible says above all else guard your heart for it is a wellspring of life yes so boundaries are there to be able to help us to guard our hearts here yeah. yeah amazing yeah remember if you miss uh, that conversation go to our youtube channel like you mentioned that is at pal digital ke make sure you go there watch like subscribe and share mm. but let's start off with the boundaries now what are these what are, uh, let's start first of all to define what are boundaries okay yeah now, first of all, boundaries are simply demarcation, line, and I would give an example of a rail guard. Mm -hmm. If you going driving along a road that is very steep, they put that guard there for a reason. Yes. And the guard is to protect you so that in case you're sleepy, you don't end up rolling in the ditch. And life is full of challenges and ditches. So boundaries are there to be able to protect you from falling into that harmful lifestyle. And that is the so in a direct boundary is simply a clear demarcation or a dividing line. Then boundaries differ from one person to another, you mm -hmm. know, depending with the culture, personality, and social, you know, they call it the social context. Yes. And so you talk about culture, for example, you go to French countries, what happened? They give bizu. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you come to Africa, our yeah. African <laughs> culture, you do that, you're in danger. You're in danger. So you realize that indeed what they do there is yes. not I should do here. Yes. You go to some culture in a silent, what do they do? Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't greet their hand. Yeah. They, for a child, they, they touch their head. Yes. There's simply boundaries that have been put there to be able to maintain such a respect among them. So boundaries are there. Now, you talk about um, in what we studied in school. Yeah. So boundaries like in, in, in normal in a country it is where my country line ends and where yours starts yeah meaning everything that is on my side belongs to me and that belongs to you but apart from that again in relationship it's a, a clear definition of one person how I differ from the other yes as well you can also say mm -hmm. that female and male is a boundary. Mm -hmm. It's a clear demarcation. I'm a male, and this word describes what a male is. Yeah. 
and I'm a female. This is what describes what a female is. And value systems also. Mm -hmm. All those things, they help indeed to describe who we are and how we set boundary. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And now coming into relationship. Yeah. So why should we keep boundaries, especially in relationship for, let's say for even those people who are, maybe they're single, even mm -hmm. they're dating and they're looking for it. So why should we keep boundaries? Um, uh, it is important to keep boundaries because one of the, and I believe I always tell us that Christianity plays a very important role. One, mm -hmm. because the Bible says, above all else, guard your heart for it is a wellspring of life. Yeah. So by keeping boundaries, from the heart within which every decision, every choice comes, the first and very important part of it, that it protects my heart from emotional damage, it protects my heart from unwanted individual or unwanted situations. So keeping boundaries is for the protection protection of the most significant part of us and that is our heart because from the overflow of the heart then do we we build relationships yes from the overflow of the heart we make decisions so if my heart is not well protected my decisions and my relationship will not be protected mm -hmm. yes well so that is very very important yes. and, and even you're talking about tree you know when it comes to especially chris and it is very very important mm -hmm. and uh there is this aspect of uh you know because we know this yeah that one as a man in soil they usually say that damn in a chimka and sometimes yeah, we don't yeah. know when to cross the line and mm. we actually ha so how ha what are some of the things that will tell you that indeed first of all you're crossing the boundaries uh, good good damn we i chimuki bure damn we na chimuka na sababu and that's where you go to go back to Boundaries created are supposed to protect you from damu in a chemuka. Mm -hmm. For a man, we are factual. A sister comes and touches your body. What happened? You respond. Mm -hmm. That what happened. Number number two, you go to a secluded place where you are just you and the sister. Yeah. Again, once damu ime chemuka, what happened? You end up getting involved in sexual immorality. And what happens if you set these boundaries early enough that in my relationship with you, I really value you so much and the image of God in you that needs to be protected must be protected by the values God instituted. So I would request, because the Bible says above all else, you, you got to keep purity. Impurity is not right. Yeah. So a pure mind. And I agree with her sister. Listen, mm -hmm. myself being as a man, if you touch me, I feel like my hormones, the adrenaline systems begin to warm up. Yeah. You know, towards a certain area that make my mind not pure. So then you end up creating boundaries at that particular moment in a relationship. Let's avoid secluded places. Let's avoid touching each other. Let's keep ourselves pure. And you don't know, do not do it for other people. This you do because you honor God. You have a you want to have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. That will help. Mm -hmm. The other thing, again, to be able to do that is, is allowing yourself to have core values that you've agreed about and you set them earlier. You don't wait until you fall in a trap is when you want to become wiser. So the moment you are having an inclination yeah. that I'm even loving this particular daughter and she's a daughter of God, mm -hmm. then I have to quickly go back and have a sitting with her and agree how should we and what should we set boundaries around yeah. so that we protect ourselves from becoming impure. Mm -hmm. Remember, God who created us and give, gave us the image that belongs to him knows exactly how we need to live. And I want you to go to the book of Genesis. What does he tell Adam and Eve? Thou shalt not touch that tree. And if you touch it, these are the consequences. Yes. What happened to them? Did they believe the consequences would happen when the devil came? No. But when they touched it, what happened? They were chased from the garden. And so they are, it is therefore very important that once our core values are important, as, are clear as Christians, mm -hmm. we remain within those core values because why? What a man sows is what he reaps. Yeah. The cause and effect of applies. You do not come up with boundaries. What will happen to you? You end up falling into the trap that you do not desire to fall into. Yeah. Many people don't fall into immorality because they wanted the plant. No. Mm -hmm. 
is because they were not very keen and clear about their boundaries wow. yes mm-hmm. yes amazing and I- even as you're talking about that because we we want to list out some of these things because we don't realize and mm. we don't know if uh, we need to put this into 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 practice so we don't know where to start so let's say you have, you, you know I, I know there's a young man who's yeah, listening right yeah, now yeah and uh you know they ha- you know he has a girlfriend or yeah, maybe a fiance yeah so uh what are some of these and h- what are some of these boundaries that he needs to keep so the boundaries number one is how to start eh? yeah you mentioned i think it is good to, to talk about it yeah boundaries number one how to start the key is having what we call self-awareness uh-huh who am i and who are you between the two of you good where because if the destination is not very clear for you where you're going to then what happened anything will prop up and it will become important mm-hmm. so if you're clear now we're having a relationship and we want this relationship to take us to marriage yeah. and before marriage we want to keep ourselves pure to each other and to god yes so you sit down and ask so who are you what are some of the things that you think if we did would make our relationship better mm-hmm. so you agree about that yes now then the question again is what are some of the areas uh, around which you need to set these boundaries some of the areas where conflicts come in or rather where we fall and we falter emotion our emotions so we've got to understand what where are some of uh, some of the areas in my life where i'm emotionally weak or i become attached or brings me issues and turmoil and once you're aware of that you set boundaries around them how far can i give my emotion to the other partner without getting hurt and the last time that i gave my emotion in this way what did it do so Mm -hmm. that self-awareness is very important yes we have what we call the physical boundary Mm -hmm physical boundary is <laughs> is where i have my body yes and i know my body is a, a <laughs> bombshell waiting to explode when certain things happen <laughs> a sister comes and dresses in a way that is uh you know not conducive to the purity of my mind i look at that and men are factual what you see is what you get, what you get but yeah. for a sister you have to persuade them you mm. have to bring a flower and, and and all that so once i know the physical boundary touch is a no-no i make clear that's another one the other uh, part again about physical is again to do with the property what i own what i possess the finances i have Mm -hmm. what are the boundaries are set around those particular areas to be able to safeguard to protect because if my property that i cherish most Mm -hmm. is not protected it gets spoiled what happened i emotionally become distraught Mm -hmm. apart from that what else we have the, the the conversational boundary the words that speak the Bible says the word, the tongue has a power of life and death. Yes. So if, like, for example, the Bible is very well on that, but you got to go back. If someone tells a sister, a brother tells a sister that, I love you. Sister, you know, I love you very much. Mm-hmm. What is he saying? I am already committed to you. Yes. So if you find a man who tells one sister, I love you, another sister, I love you, another how many more sisters is he committed to there's a man who does not have boundaries they are le- reckless with their words and then they end up making other people other many women fall for him uh-huh. you get it yes. so conversational boundary as well the mm-hmm. words you speak are very important that you got to be the word there is there is a time for everything and a season for everything at that time to say i love you the time just say hey sister how are you i made a mistake as i was dating and, and I, it's not like i'm an angel yes you know i would tell my darling then i love you with the love of christ mm-hmm. a time came when i became tired i said no i love you man i was <laughs> given a talk <laughs> because for her she knew what yes. that exactly yes. meant uh-huh. and so i had to restructure my vocabulary to be able to be fit where our relationship was because we are not even engaged we were still just in a dating relationship yeah then apart from that we also have uh, what we call the relationship and sexual boundary mm-hmm. you could also find a way of being able to protect your relationship and just hold that Good. thought oh, yeah. and, and, and you know uh we there's a scripture that actually 
that uh, I like to quote and mm-hmm. the book of Job chapter 31 mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. from verse 1. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says that, uh, that you know, Job made this particular, you know, uh, statement that I made a covenant with, with my, my eyes, eyes not to look at a woman, woman lastfully. lastfully. Yeah. And, and you'll be talking about that men are factual. Yeah. And we're talking about even, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because you know sometimes ah. you cannot resist and you cannot because we're living in an era where yeah. the Gen Z's are saying that you know what my dress my choice I get you yes and I so get they get you. tempted because when they see um, you know this lady is dressed like this yeah. you know and I it is revealing you. so how do you put boundaries with your eyes yeah. <laughs> w- one mm. Um, we, we have to go back first of all to the sister community when I dress uh, with a cloth that is just open that shows my body I'm just marketing myself and I'm showing that I'm so cheap yes I don't value <laughs> I don't value myself wow yes yeah because kizuri kizuri chajiuza kibaya chajitembeza <laughs> when I have to show, yes, I don't. Then I, there's no. I don't value myself mm-hmm. to a point where my privacy is not important. Now, good for men. God gave you an eye, and 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 you have the Bible says the eye is a lamp of the body. Yes. So you have what we call the neurons and the brain, the way the brain functions. It is through what you hear and what you see, that which you consume so much programs you into a being and i want to give you men who tend to watch a lot of pornographic stuff what happened they become addicted and when they get married for those i've met with they realize the sister or daughter's god is not able to provide that which they were used to yes they end up many times struggling or they end up in divorce because yes. what the eye see is the eye programs some of the men you look at a woman last fully the whole day then you go back home miserably in your bed then you end up falling into masturbation and tomorrow if it's a sister in church when you look at her because you've already impured her on your bed you will not quickly look at her face because already you're having those thoughts yes good so making a vow practice makes perfect is a choice and a decision brain is programmed you look at a woman and one of the vows are made why should i look at a woman breast downwards i don't do that yeah so i made a vow <laughs> but do you feel like Yes, I feel like <laughs> there's a time where they smile and you are, but you're like, no, you yeah. make a vow because you know your destination, where you want to go to, who you want to become, and you know that if I, the moment I look, what will happen? Yes, my brain will go where it's not supposed to be. One, two. The fact that my eye has seen, does it mean now I have to entertain a thought that is different from that? Mm-hmm. That is where the Bible is also clear. You go to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Yes. So when your eyes have seen, that mm-hmm. which should not be seen. You remember David on top of Bathsheba issue, on top of the building, then he sees Bathsheba bathing naked. Yes. He was idle. He had nothing to do. Yes. <laughs> by the time you're having time to think through and digest about a woman's body deeply, your brain is not busy you have nothing to do in your brain wow keep yourself busy like i i, I travel i walk around i walk with my earphones listening to books mm-hmm. i read why to keep my brain busy yes. and i don't mind become the devil's workshop so when you keep on having all the time when you look you're tempted you desire that simply means your brain needs to be kept busy with something significant or important Mm -hmm. now we spoke about is that okay we spoke about a relationship earlier yes and we spoke about building boundaries in relationship and why we should and i will i wanted to help you understand why or rather those of us who are listening when in a relationship you are in there and you get involved sexually because you had not indeed created or built healthy boundaries no no yeah yes what happened is you be, make it a routine and you end up sleeping with your woman consistently that means you have no self-control which is a fruit of the holy spirit, spirit. men who have cheated or who have slept with ladies while they were not married. When they get married, they end up always cheating with other women out there yes. because they've not built the self-control, which is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Number one, 
the moment you sleep with this daughter of God while you are single, you are defiled, she will not trust you. True. Why? Because if you could sleep with me before we change our wedding vows, what about now that we are married? Who else? So you will keep on, <laughs> she'll keep on just watching it, looking at you. Who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? And you find that relationship becomes so uncomfortable. Yeah. Number three. You get involved into that without setting that clear boundary. You become defiled in your heart, in your mind before God because you know very well, I did what was not supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. So then you go, you go to that pulpit. The pastor is joining you guys together. To him, he prays for you because he knows you are so pure. Man, can, can you imagine the guilt you're carrying with you at that particular moment? Yeah. You remain guilty for the rest of your life. And that's why if you've done a mistake and possibly you got involved before your wedding, it is important to talk about it. Yes. So that you clean, you go to a wedding day with a pure heart, clean heart, and in between there's what we call spiritual formation that once you fall into that, does not make you worse. No, there's still room, the grace of God for repentance you come and a minister or the church or the counselor will walk you through and then you develop that which you lacked which is called the self-discipline and once you carry that mm -hmm. then you bring it to your marriage trust me you'll have a wonderful marriage mm. shall we go ahead yes and, okay, continue. And, and allow me to ask you this because yeah. this is this is very important yeah mm. uh, how because we we know that in this era that we're living people actually yeah. i think they uh, they are the people who have allowed their flesh to overtake the spirit yeah and we yeah. cannot we cannot we cannot we cannot uh, forget to say that you know we're living in an era where people are compromising all mm. over and so there is this brother who is striving to walk in purity yeah. and so what are some of those boundaries that he will you know maybe he wants to i want to walk in sexual purity yeah. uh, in as much nowadays people say that when you, you know when you when you do this then you don't know anything in this life you know mm. when you fall out and everything <laughs> <laughs> so how i'm a brother or maybe even i'm a sister yeah. and i want to keep myself sexually pure what are some of those boundaries that i need to keep personal for myself uh, good uh, one is uh, what you watch the kind of movies you watch mm -hmm. together very important mm -hmm. two uh, they I talk about darkness being a tool of the devil in our days the curfew was by six seven o'clock you take that someone's daughter back home yes and uh, you ask for permission officially you honor the parents enough and you introduced officially so when you go with her you take her back home before the late hours darkness is a tool of the devil wow and so it's very important number three have what we call a teamwork have other singles around you who also are dating form a collabo and sign like an agreement or agree that's a boundary you're setting let's protect each other and look out for each other that none of us goes far and beyond and then apart so just sitting down and talking through some of those measures we really help the other thing again is uh, we all have to acknowledge that at times you find that even before you committed to christianity you were really moral to a point where your body Yes. You understand your body became so active mm -hmm. and that is where now we also have counseling apart from counseling at times you'll be given medication to be able to lower your your, your libido that yeah. one is there you know but that's when now you see a doctor to be able to help you through that because there are times are when we have blamed people but it's a medical condition because they are addicted you know an addiction as you were leaving it in earlier, it's not just easy to overcome. Right? Yes. And so you have to also accept yourself, this is where I am, and you seek for that appropriate help to be able to manage and to control you. Uh, but as you do that as well, I tell people, information is power. It's good to read a lot of books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you're dating somebody, get to know how do I maintain. So reading books around about boundaries. Yes. Very important. Mm -hmm. Attending seminars around boundaries. Mm -hmm. Very important. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, please avoid being in the room alone, the two of you thinking you're strong strong and spiritual. <laughs> I always, and we are going to pray. You know, I always tell <laughs> yes, we are going to pray. That is the excuse they give. I always tell people <laughs> yeah. when when a cow becomes a bull, you know a bull, eh? Yes. <laughs> what do they do? They have to dehorn it. Why? Yes. Because that time it is mature and ready. Yes. So why do they dehorn it? Because it the capacity of it killing. Yes. So when a young man is ready for marriage, mm -hmm. they are bull. Yes. So there's a way to dehorn themselves by allowing themselves to be vulnerable to accept. Um 
really ripe. Yeah. And my body is really ripe. So what do I do? I need to know what, how to talk about it, how to protect myself. Intentionality is key. Because I've seen weddings that have been rushed. Why? Because a woman is pregnant. Yes. Now they're rushing it quickly so that they hide the pregnancy. And then for seven months or six months later, <laughs> they wonder, this is a miracle baby. <laughs> You know, these things happen. Yeah. And as you do the wedding, mm -hmm. there's a shame that comes with it. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And so that what have, those are some of the things that I think measure that can be taken mm -hmm. to be able to protect one as you get into a dating relationship. Amazing. Yeah. Now, continue. Because you're, you're sharing with us the, 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 uh, the, the points on actually on how to keep the relationship, the, the boundaries in a relationship. Good. Yeah. Now, um, if you go back, why are boundaries important? Mm -hmm. Boundaries, number one, they keep you from controlling other people yes. as well as you being controlled by other people. A boundary makes you feel safe because you're no longer people pleasing. You know when to say no, when to say yes. But what a burden that you've not created healthy boundary, you're trying to please everybody on earth. Anybody, somebody asks you, yes, yes, yes. Even if you are giving money, you're so broke. If you're giving your emotions to people, you're so broke emotionally, what happened? You end up becoming tired and you are empty. So boundaries protect you from that. For you know when to say no. You know when to say yes. And what happened? It builds your self-esteem. When it builds your self-esteem, you are able to make wiser and stronger decisions. It, it goes far, by the way. People yeah. have no idea. But once you don't have boundaries, that problem. The other thing, again, that boundaries will do for you is boundary will help you to know how to manage your thoughts, your feelings, within a certain parameter. Because within your thoughts, there's a boundary. I know what comes in and what must not come in because it doesn't belong to that which I have designated for myself. So if some of the things I'm thinking about, it is clear for me, I have made a decision, you stop it quickly. You understand? Yeah. If I am watching a movie, I know that movie will introduce an intrusive thought that will affect my purity. But because I've set boundary, what do I do? I switch that movie off. So boundaries protect you. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Yes. That which you've planted to your thought, you will do it. True. You keep on watching, watching, watching. <laughs> then, oh, warm me. How do I do it? I can't believe it. You can't believe it, but you've been watching it on television all the time. Yes. So, but when you have a clear boundaries, it at the end of it is able to protect you from that. Apart from that, that particular fine boundaries, like I spoke about even just financially, mm -hmm. you know, we all have salaries and we budget with it. Imagine you, this sister comes and you just keep on taking her out. On this. And uh, yes, mm -hmm. and, and by, by before the, at the end of the month, by middle of the month, you're broke. You don't even have money. Who are you blaming for your brokenness? <laughs> That sister. That sister, yes. So will that relationship go far? No. Because you're simply a people pleaser. Yes. But if you've set a boundary around your finances and mm -hmm. you tell her, listen, yeah. uh, I think we will be going out on date twice mm -hmm. and this is how far I can go with my finances. Yeah. Apart from that, if you also want to treat me, please feel free. Once you do that, it will be able to protect your finances as well. And, and 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 you know in, this, in as much we're talking about putting you know uh, boundaries but sometimes you can put boundaries which are not even healthy mm. you know i mean make a boundaries but you know very well these are just yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's just yeah. an escape plan <laughs> it's very true yeah so let's talk about now how do you keep now those um you know the healthy boundaries how do you know that yeah. you're keeping the healthy boundaries yeah. i think that statement is very important uh you can't set boundaries beyond who you are mm -hmm. meaning that uh, if i'm healthy then what comes from within me is healthy yes because many times people use boundaries just to be able to protect themselves but they're selfish mm -hmm. sinful 
Yes. So that is not good. So the question is then, how can I know if I have set healthy boundaries in a relationship or yes. not? Number one, the question you're going to ask yourself is, how often do I worry about what other people think of me? Because if you worry too much about what people think of you, you are people pleasing. Maybe you don't have the identity and uh, the ability to say no or yes. Yes. Because a healthy person mm-hmm. will be able to tell you, I don't think I would want to do that. I don't think I would appreciate you touching me the way you touch me. Mm-hmm. I don't think I would appreciate you calling me this late hours of the night mm-hmm. for this is what it does for me. So if somewhere in your heart you feel like they should not, they should not, but you're not talking about it, you are lacking a healthy boundary. The other thing, do I feel guilty for wanting to do things by myself? Because there are times just good to spoil yourself go uh-huh. to a restaurant eat you take care of yourself buy for yourself something but if you feel guilty for just taking care of yourself there's an unhealthy boundary the bible says love others as you love yourself right? yes so if you don't take care of yourself then who will be the fashion of the world uh-huh. who will who will the world look up to mm-hmm. so it's important to also ask yourself that when did i last say no to someone Am I always just saying yes all the time? If you always saying yes and saying no is a problem for you, there is an insecurity somewhere. Yes. Your identity has been lost. You're trying to be like everybody else. Mm-hmm. It's a big problem. By the way, people who do that end up becoming so miserable, so tired, so cranky. They are an angel on the street, but when they go back home, only their roommates will tell you who they are in truth. Yeah, that happens. Mm-hmm. The other thing, when you know, when did I when when did I last say yes to something I secretly didn't want to do? I secretly don't want to do it, but I still say yes. yes. Mm-hmm. That's a lack of boundary, and that's where you got to go back to examine examine yourself. Do I feel like I deserve respect or? I have to earn it by being nice to people. If you don't respect yourself, Mm -hmm. who will? Mm -hmm. It all begins because many times people will not appreciate you setting boundaries. Yes. They feel like you're being selfish. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Simply, boundary means this is my territory. Yes. This is how I'd appreciate or loved, cared for or love protected so if you don't like it then i think you're the one with the problem because you also have your boundaries you understand yes and so that's very important what are the five rules to being my friend's friend do i know them quickly and easily because our friendships so what are the rules guiding this particular friendships these rules do i know them can i speak them quickly because if i've got no rules meaning i have no boundaries yeah. in my relationship so i go with the flow peer pressure let's go drink we drink i had a wonderful song leader christian who from another church who i met very innocent raised up in a christian family friends were going out for an all night uh, but also when they're going for all night then they finished and they went for another party and there was booze she had no idea what wine was and she was given testing finally she drank she ended up being raped and she regret- regretted for the rest of her life wow. so a party that really was supposed to be good because she had no boundaries she followed the people she drank that which was not supposed to be mm-hmm. she became vulnerable to mm-hmm. the devil's trap so wow. it's very important the friendship i have you know, literally do i have rules that guide not our rules my personal rules Mm -hmm. but guides me on who to choose and who to work with what are the 10 things i most like to do with my time because i've got to also have things that i like to do with my time can i quickly come up with these things if i have nothing for me 
do I really love myself? Yeah. So I've got to go back. I love watching movies when I'm tired. I've worked the whole day, the whole weekend. Maybe it's time to go for mountain climbing. Mm -hmm. And are they, you know, the hobbies, are they on your fingertips? If you don't have them clearly, you got no boundaries. Yeah. Or your boundaries are not mm -hmm. healthy. The other one, when I think about saying no to someone, do I feel afraid or calm inside? Mm -hmm. Because you are about to say no, and you find your your heart is jumping and jumping. There's a problem somewhere. But when someone is telling you something, and you're calm, and you're listening, you tell them, that one, I don't think I would really want that. And, and that is where you got to be very clear. Like last time we spoke, some of the boundaries are set around traditions, which are really confusing, historical that are really confusing. Yeah. You've got to have your core values clear. If my boundaries are set around the Bible, mm -hmm. then the Bible becomes my principle, law, and rule from which within I make decisions. Yeah. So that clarity is very important as well. So saying no, why are you saying no? From what basis? Is it because your grandfather told you or grandmother or you understand? Yeah. That's very important. Is that good? Yeah. You know, we have like uh, just four minutes before okay. we hit the top of there. And it okay. really, you've shared very, very many things. And it's very important that you've talked about because once you discover yourself, once you understand to put boundaries on yourself, then you'll be able even to maneuver in the relationship yeah. very good. Yeah. And so it's very important what you've shared. But there's a question here. Mm. And just want to address this even before we call it wrap because you're yeah. going to continue this conversation mm. next, next week. week yeah. Yes. We're talking about boundaries in relationship. But there's a question here. Someone's saying here, um, uh, can loneliness for a single lady cause depression? <laughs> um, loneliness, indeed, there is what we call disorder. Mm -hmm. Prolonged is not healthy. Mm -hmm. So it is, yes, if it is prolonged, momental loneliness. Loneliness simply is a sign that there's something somewhere that is not right that needs to be worked on. So when you feel lonely, what happened? Just go back and examine what is it that is making me feel lonely. The other thing, yeah. you know, people try to uh, cope and the coping system they have trying to fill that gap of loneliness with people, other people, loneliness with sex, with the drugs, are they thinking that that is what will fill that gap? It never fills that gap. It's a temporary measure. Mm -hmm. And that's what I tell people. Number one, if your personal relationship with yourself and with God does not make you secure enough and make you feel okay enough, there will be a problem. Mm -hmm. You will use people. Not only make people, you will use people. It's a deep thing to be, to be able to fill that gap. And what about if the person you're using tomorrow hurts you? Mm -hmm. Then you hurt so deeply. Yes. That if you're secure and you've known when I'm lonely, my source of strength comes from God. You pray and fast. You seek for a mentor who can help you come out of it. And you walk through and you grow in character. You don't use people anymore. So loneliness is a good place to be as an indicator of something wrong that needs to be changed and worked on. Wrong loneliness prolonged becomes a disorder. Mm -hmm. It actually leads to ailments as well because yeah. there's a worry disorder. There is anxiety disorder when it is prolonged. It will bring that. So please be aware that do not prolong it. Go back look for why mm -hmm. that happens yes amazing amazing yeah. now we have a lot to share we have a lot to, <laughs> to share and sometimes i usually feel that this time is too short <laughs> no, no it's okay <laughs> but we're going to continue this conversation next week we're going to pause it from that moment you. but you're going to continue next week even as we talk about boundaries in relationship but 96.9 fm pearl radio